Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on creating PBR materials in Rhino 7. This video will be following on from the previous video that looked at setting up environmental lighting for a render within Rhino 7. And we're now going to be creating specific materials for the objects in our scene. We're going to start with the concrete elements of our scene, which are all these layers in red. And you'll see that I've already layered up my scene by its materials and this is quite useful when we get to adding lots of materials in we can easily apply the materials to each of the layers so it gets a lot easier to work with so I'm going to start with the concrete which are these red materials and we're going to create a PBR material for this and what PBR stands for is physically based rendering and essentially what that is and I'll bring up some examples of this and this is textures.com I'll put a link to this in the description of the video but this has a sort of series of PBR materials you can download and a PBR material is essentially a way of replicating realistic kind of physically based materials in your render engine using a series of photographs to help get those images across. So if I select one, for example, you'll see this is built up of an ablido or diffuse map, which is essentially the color, a height map, normal map and these two kind of control the bumpiness of the surface of the material and then we've got a roughness and an ambient occlusion and some might have some extra maps and some might have a few less as well but it's essentially this idea of using image maps as a way of controlling the way your materials look in the scene and each of these images adds a different property to the material so a bleedo adds the color height adds some height to the geometry and you can kind of see how some of the bits of geometry are pushed back in this one and some are pulled forward so all of these will add to the way the material is displayed in this in, in this particular example now for our concrete we're going to start by just going to our materials tab here and creating a new material in rhino and we're going to create a physically based material here and this is the new feature that's been brought into Rhino 7 so you'll only be able to get this material if you're using the latest version of Rhino 7 there. So with that made we'll pull this concrete and we'll start to add some of these image based parameters into our material. Now once you've made that you'll see you get a few options down here to change the colour and the opacity and then also under the detail settings, we've got a lot more options of different ways we can control this material. So we're going to start with the base color. And I'm just once I click that on, you'll see that you can scroll down and then you have more options under these detailed settings here. So under the color, we're going to instead of choosing just a block color, we're actually going to assign a texture. And you can also do that by this click to assign button here. And in there, I'm going to be trying to replicate a red concrete for this object. So I'm going to click on this concrete diffuse red. And this is going to be the color of my object here. And we're going to open that up. And you'll see there my preview, that that color is now on my small little preview of the object there. Now, under this MET, which stands for metallic, and the RO, which stands for roughness, we're not actually going to change those parameters. I'll just draw this out here so we can see it a bit more clearly. Um, we're not using a metal material, so the metallic setting is going to be set to zero. And for my roughness, I'm just going to leave that as it is for now. And we might go and tweak it later. Now, the next parameter I want to bring in is my bump map or normal or displacement. And this, as we spoke before, is about controlling the surface of the material to give it some kind of unevenness, some bumpiness, depending on the material we're using. Now, the concrete it's going to be quite flat but it's got a little bit of bump in it from where the sort of holes and pores might be when you've poured the concrete in you might have small air bubbles in the surface so in order to get that in once we've select that bump and normal we'll get this option down here and under bump map we're going to click to assign another texture and we're going to assign our bump texture and you'll see here that this is essentially a black and white image and wherever it's white the object is essentially going to be smooth and wherever we get those little bits of black dots, it's going to push the geometry down when we render it and therefore give it some slight bumpiness to the surface. So that's my bump map and we'll just load that one in there. And once it comes in, you might see a slight change. It will be quite subtle in this preview, but you'll see it more clearly in the view here. And that's, we've got a tick there, so we know that's applied. 
Now the next one I want to add is the specularity and this is almost the kind of shininess of the object. What I want for this is I want some areas of my concrete to be quite shiny and some to be quite dull so it's kind of a patchy effect we want to give it um, and in that under this sort of F0 panel here we're going to click to assign the texture again and we're going to assign this kind of abstract texture here which is essentially what they call a dirt map when you're rendering and what it does is that anywhere that's light will be shiny and anywhere that's dark will be dull in the texture. So it's a way of controlling the shininess using this sort of patchy texture effect and you can make these in Photoshop just using kind of random brushes to make these kind of textures. And we're going to load that in and it will give us a little bit of a mismatch on our shininess. So you should see this update and it will be a little bit less even on the shininess. Some areas might be shinier than others and that's this kind of patchy effect that we want to get across. So for now, those are the kind of main parameters I wanted to load up into my concrete texture. So now we can have a go at testing this out on my materials. Now one way to do this is you can move your shaded to a rendered view so we can get a view of what it looks like when the view is rendered. It's a kind of preview so it's not exact but it gives us a more accurate depiction of what this will look like when rendered. You might get a bit of clipping at the bottom here which is where the kind of camera is cutting through some of the objects. Don't worry about that, that should come out fine when you render it out. Now we're going to have a go at texturing up this sort of volume here. So I'm just going to select that and we're going to right click on our texture and we're going to assign that to the object there. And you'll see there that that's now been applied on and we've got some quite good, it's picking up on the shiny parts there and you can see how that patchy shininess map is working. The problem with this is, and I'm just going to zoom in on it, is that it's currently stretching the texture out over the whole model and you'll see it sort of looks a bit different depending on the angle we've got it at. The reason for that is because I haven't mapped the texture at all. And what mapping means is you're essentially controlling the size of the texture on the object. At the moment it's currently just stretching that texture all across the object. So the top of the texture starts at the top and it stretches all the way down to the bottom. Now this particular material is a repeating pattern and I've made some seamless or repeating materials before on this channel and have a couple of videos going into detail on that and I'll put a link to them in the description if you want to go back and watch those. But essentially what that means is I can scale this texture down and it will repeat and cause a seamless texture across the whole model. Now to do that we're going to select the group we've applied that texture to and we'll go to the properties panel and we're going to go to texture mapping here. Under there we're going to apply a box mapping which is this panel here, apply box mapping and we're going to draw out a cube and this cube is essentially going to denote how large this texture will be and I'm going to do it randomly at first it doesn't matter how big it is because we can adjust that later. So this little preview tells us that one square of my texture is going to be this big and then it's going to repeat again and again and again based on that size of the cube. So if I hit enter you'll then see that this texture will now update on my model and it will be a lot smaller on that particular volume that we've applied it to. So that's now updated and you can see now the texture is a lot smaller, it's a lot less stretched and it looks a little bit more even there. And I think that's quite a good size. You can see that sort of reflection working and the patchiness of it. If you wanted to adjust it, you can select the group again, go back to that texture mapping. And now we've applied that box mapping, we can just go down to this X, Y, sort of Z size here. And you see it's kind of two meters by three meters by three meters, and we can adjust that if we want. So I'm gonna adjust it to four by four by four. And this would just be set to your units. I'm in meters currently for the scene because it's quite a large model. But if you're in millimeters, it might come out kind of 4,000 by 4,000, depending on how big it is. And there you can see that's adjusted. So that's working quite well there. And we'll go back to our perspective view to have a look. And I think let's maybe try a slightly larger size there. Let's try six by six by six. Yeah, and I think that's working quite well. So that was basically a quick way of going through and making a PBR material in 
Rhino. We're going to then have a go at applying this to all our concrete. So I'm going to right click, select objects in that layer, and then we're going to go back to my, our material and assign my material to all those objects. We can also assign by layer, but I'm just going to do it per object for now. And once we've assigned that on, we're then going to just texture map all these objects. So concrete supplied to all those concrete materials in my scene. So you see now that the texture is now on those objects and we need to now map them. So we'll do the same thing back to properties, apply box mapping, draw out our box, not worrying too much about the size for now. Hit enter. And then once that's applied, we go back to the XYZ size and I think six meters was good. So we'll make sure it's six by six by six for all of these objects. And then deselect. And there you can see that that's now been applied to all of them following that mapping. Now the last thing to do is do a render preview to see what this is looking like. So we'll go up to render and hit render preview and have a load of this and see how it looks. And there you can see that that material has now been applied across all our objects. Because it's a preview it's looking quite grainy in places and that's just because of the reflections aren't as sharp as they would be if we rendered out the full thing. I've also done a high quality render on this area which I've zoomed in slightly so you can see the sort of smaller details on this texture and how this affects the object. You can see where the bump map has been applied. We've got this slightly kind of uneven surface here which as it will render out, it will get sharper and sharper and the quality of this will kind of look nicer and nicer. You can also see where we've added that specular map in. We're getting these sort of areas that are quite reflective and then areas which are a bit more dull as well. So all of these maps combined start to kind of create this overall texture. And this is the sort of what you'd get when you render out the texture at a higher quality. Obviously, the longer you leave this, the sharper this would get. This has currently gone for five minutes, but if I leave it for an hour, it will look kind of even sharper as well. So that was just a quick video tutorial on setting up a PBR material in Rhino 7 using Rhino 7's new PBR material maker and creation options. In the next videos, we'll be going and looking at how we do different types of PBR materials. And I'll be going through metals, glass and water textures. And we'll be using all of these on this same image and building up this image material by material so we can start to create the overall render for this. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.